Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Midli. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satna joins me to discuss whether intergenerational dialogue is necessary and possible. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Why do you consider intergenerational dialogue so important, and what is the barrier in the way of it being achieved? Uh, you know, in the course of the struggle, especially from the 1976 uprising, uh, intergenerational uh, dialogue and solidarity was very important. When the school kids were attacked in 1976, they formed a committee of six, if I remember, or eight in Soweto. Again, in the 80s, there were various efforts by parents to stand by their children to form a protective barrier to prevent police from coming to arrest their children to prevent them from attacking them. But also it grew into a number of crisis committees in the 1980s, the Soweto Crisis Committee, people like the late Eric Molobi, Fusi Kanyile, a number of others were on that committee. And then it developed in a number of other areas into NECC, the Nas National Education Crisis Committee. And I think Zuelake Sisulu was involved in it, or Zuelake Sisulu, but at any rate, Zuelake gave, the late Zuelake gave uh, a keynote address to one of their meetings. So there's a tradition of intergenerational dialogue because there was a sense, you can also see this when you read about the period prior to 1976, how some of the 1976 leaders, like Murphy Morobe, Boni Pijana, uh, and others, well, Bonnie was not exactly a 76 leader, but he was in black consciousness. A number of these people made contact with veterans because they wanted to learn about the history of the struggle. They wanted to draw lessons from victories that had been achieved, from defeats that had been suffered. And uh, they needed advice on strategies and tactics. And the ANC underground, insofar as that it had uh, re-established itself became a resource. It was not behind the 1976 rising, but once the rising occurred, a lot of these young people were helped out of the country by some of the ANC underground, the older generation. So there was a sense also, there was also a need sometimes to restrain the youth because there was, when you're a young person, your a uh, focus tends to be on the short term. If you throw a stone, you see an immediate result. A window is broken or something like that. But if you want something lasting to be built, like an organization, you've got to be patient. Like Lindiwe Sasulu is quoted as saying about her mother, but all you are doing is building organization. Now what Albertina Sasulu, Elliot, uh, Chapangu and others were doing was slowly building a foundation for what would happen after the 1976 rising. I mean, they didn't have in mind exactly when. There were also other situations when older people, because they had a certain authority, because they were respected, because they had legitimacy, uh, because there was not the sense that they were, uh, you know, um, untrustworthy. When there were conflicts between sections of the youth and the students, for example, uh, beating up the uh, uh, Azasim, so-called Zimzims, black consciousness people, or vice versa, there were attempts to try to make people understand that that is not the way you try to win people over. And they did this. Mm -hmm with varying success. Now, what we have at the present moment is a situation where a new generation has emerged. And as I said in my article, they've actually uh, scored important victories last year. But they are very diverse. It's not one movement. It's a very diverse movement. And secondly, uh, what they write and what they say is not exactly the same. 
But one thing is clear is that maybe most of them, uh, except for, say, the WITS SRC, amongst others, most of them are not respect, do not have no respect for the ANC. Um, they have no respect for the struggle in the case of many of them. They think the struggle sold the peop black people out in South Africa, particularly over land and wealth and things like that. Now, um, the insofar as you do have some leaders like these SLC people at Wirtz, uh, their leadership is contested by other fallist movements, uh, fees must fall uh, movements who uh, believe that it's not right to be, uh, these people are subordinating their uh, mandate from the students to what they get from Lutuli House. I'm not taking sides on that. All I'm wanting to say is that in general there's no respect for the struggle, there's no respect for the history, there's no respect for the bearers or the supposed bearers of the legacies of the struggle. Now, I don't think that this, that, that is unhealthy in itself because as Angela Davis said, while every generation stands on the backs of the revolutionaries who preceded them, they have to imagine their own ideas of freedom in the new conditions that they encounter. But what I believe is important and why I believe intergenerational dialogue is important is that there are lessons to be learned from the past. When I was in the struggle, we studied what had happened before and some people thought it was obvious that they should have taken up arms long before they did. And what I learned is they didn't want to be an isolated group of fighters. They wanted the population to support them so that they could be um, sheltered if they attacked this or that installation of the government. So I think it's very important to broaden the base. Any movement, whether it's a workers' movement, a communist movement, or a students' movement, any movement that isolates itself is in danger of being eliminated. If you form alliances and can broaden the support base, that strengthens you. So it's in their interests, but it's very hard to know how it will come about because I'm not suggesting they must talk to the ANC they must talk to people who are outside the ANC, but we're in the struggle, like myself. I don't I want to prescribe. It's up to them to decide who they should talk to. You call for intergenerational dialogue, not simply for reasons of strategizing with older people, but to relate to legacies. Why do you place such weight on legacies? You see, I use the words uh, legacies, freedoms, and a number of words in the plural. And the person who was editing it said to me, he's it's taking him a long time to get used to everything being in the plural. And it's not just um, eccentricity. The reason why one puts this in the plural is that there are multiple legacies, multiple understandings of feminism. Fe there are feminisms, patriarchies, because patriarchy can take a number of different forms. And I wanted to stress that, and it's very important here, because my conception of freedom is not universalizable. It is something that I must recognize. If I interact with you or with anyone else, I must recognize it's just one conception. Now, what is interesting about the young people is that they do draw on a number of different traditions. And I don't think that my article gave enough attention, maybe it was the way it was written, to the influences besides the ANC uh, on bringing about freedom and also in the present. A lot of them hold Robert Sabukwe, Steve Biko, Franz Fanon in great, def in great awe and they don't hold the ANC leaders in awe. Um, I'm not sure that in every case this is a product of careful study, but in many cases it is, it is, and it's very important that we 
remedy the situation where the impression is given that the only liberation movement in South Africa has been the ANC. Uh, so it's important that we remedy that. And that is a condition for relating to these students who actually come into these things with uh, very different perspectives from a number of us and very little respect for our history. Now, the way to address that is not to say, you know nothing, you know, why don't you go and read about this and uh, you wet behind the ears, you've never been in the trenches, this and the other. You know, it's very easy, it's what the Free Lima used to call veteranism. Now, what I feel is we need people who are not uh, tainted in the eyes of these young people to initiate dialogue, educators, faith-based people, and any others who may be held in some respect by all who can be part of an ongoing dialogue. If they don't have this dialogue, they're going to be isolated, they're going to get smashed. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sapner speaking to Creamer Media's policy about intergenerational dialogue.